Hi, my name is Jonna McCall, and I'm a mental health counselor, expressive therapist in Seattle, Washington. Um, today is Sunday, March 22nd, and we are in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak. Um, what that looks like for everyone is a little bit different depending on where you are geographically. Um, right now in Seattle, what's happening is that I think there's going to be uh, an order of shelter in place, which means we will all be ordered to stay indoors and only leave if absolutely necessary. Um, so what I wanna do is offer some opportunities to participate in expressive therapy directives and to just engage in some stories and information um, pertaining to mental health or um, trauma, anxiety, uh, the way I like to do that is through a relational approach, which means that I enjoy sharing my own stories as well as hearing other people's stories. And that's a big part of how I connect with people and how I connect with clients. So that's kind of what I will probably do here, um, as well as offering a chance to participate in some of these directives. Um, we'll do some meditations and things like that. Um, I'm also a certified yoga teacher and meditation instructor. I will not be doing yoga. Uh, I think there are plenty of places that you can find that online and um, this will not be one of them. So if you want to talk stories and art and music and trauma and coronavirus and whatnot, this is your place. So um, a little bit about expressive therapy. It is a therapy that encompasses all types of expression. And so what that means is that through um, externalizing things about one's self, one's life experience, um, you are able to kind of put that out there, put that out into the world, transform it into something that is um, easier to understand rather than having it kind of trapped or stuck in your body or your unconscious mind. Um, and we can translate it into something, get it outside of yourself. Let's say we are talking about something like shame. Shame is something that is at the root of a lot of things, as is fear. And by, by taking, um, taking pieces of the shame, taking pieces of the fear, and bringing them outside of ourselves in the form of um, creation of any kind um, or through language, um, we help to diffuse the power of that. We help to bring it out and help to kind of disperse the power. Think of it kind of like the the virus right now. When the virus is washed in soap, it breaks down parts of its exterior until it just dissolves. And that's kind of what that's kind of what expressive therapy is. It's like it's like the hand soap of life experiences. So we take it and we wash it up and it helps disperse. Um, okay, that might have been ridiculous. Anyway, bear with me. So what I want to do for this one, oh, I didn't talk about what expressive therapy is. Well, I kind of did, but here's what it can look like. It looks like visual art, music, um, photography, creative writing, poetry, um, cooking, gardening, anything that you can express yourself through. Um, drama, not the kind of drama that you save for your mama, but drama therapy as in psychodrama, um, movement, dance, 
all of these things are ways to express oneself and externalize the things that are inside of us. So what I want to do with today's directive is I want to talk about accessing memories and putting them onto paper. So what we're going to do is access some peaceful memories in our lives, some, uh, some point between the age of five and 15 where we felt where we felt at peace, where we felt joy, pleasure, something that feels like a fun memory, something warm. And for a lot of us, that might be difficult to access. There are some of us who have, you know, what we feel are horrible childhoods. And maybe it seems like there's nothing we can find in there. And it's just not true. Like, we can find things. We just have to look. And we have to really kind of be like gold miners and just go digging in for those little those little nuggets of gold which is kind of funny because that reminds me of a memory and I think I will do that memory today um, like I said it will be finding a memory between the age of 5 and 15 and no matter what was going on in your life just see what you can find and so I want to give you some examples um, I do this activity with a lot of clients and so here's one that that i did for myself i'm not going to be sharing any client work but this is one that i did alongside a client and this is pretty absurd and silly and i it just goes to show you that we're not looking for artistic perfection here we're just looking to get out some ideas on paper and this is mine that i accessed from like um i guess the age of seven or eight and this is uh, rural Utah. There are trees. Here's a little farm, some scattered houses. This is the uh, Wasatch Front, I believe. Yeah, the Wasatch Front. Um, and these are watermelons. <laughs> and this is me as a little girl. Um, just busting into a watermelon and going to town on it. Um, and that's it, that's my memory. And what I love about this having come up is that this is a time in my life when um, there was a lot of upheaval. There was a lot of chaos. My family would change forever from that point on. And this is a moment when clearly I felt free and and like a, like a kid. And so what we want to do with something like this is we want to to draw out the memory and then we want to think of of any kind of word association that goes with it. And so for me, you know, I could put kid um, freedom. I put uh, favorite food because I'm eating my favorite food, watermelon, for free, and I'm just digging in like, like I don't have a care in the world. I'm going to put that down. Not a care in the world. Um, warm sun. So I wrote all these things down on here. And I'm going to save that to access. And I'm going to do another one so that we can see how this can go. Okay, so I have finished two more drawings. And um, you can either have finished yours by now or you can do them after this video ends. But just to give you an idea again of how this works, I'm going to share a couple more of mine. And I talked about. Um, the one of mining for gold. I'll show you. I'll save that one for last. Um, I did one where I'm, it's kind of hard to see. I'm sitting cross-legged in the grass of a yard that I shared with my stepdad and my mom in Utah for a couple of years. 
and I used to go out to the yard and dig holes in the ground, and this is a hose, and I would fill them with water so that my Barbies could, <laughs> those are pretty sad Barbies, those Barbies could swim in the lake and lay out in the sun and get tanned and go camping and roast marshmallows and all that stuff. And what what I really love about this memory is that for me, this time is also still a really difficult time, but it was, there were moments that in there that were really peaceful and good. And for me, what I love about this particular memory is the association I have with all of these lilacs. It's probably hard to see the color, but there were a lot of lilacs and the grass was just really luscious and there were clovers everywhere and bees buzzing around, which weren't always great, but you know, whatever, um, it's nature. And the warm sun again, and this for me is a memory that um, I wrote down, warm sun, fun, peace, relaxed, happy, lilacs, bees, clover, and my dog, which failed to make the cut in the drawing, but I knew my dog was there somewhere frolicking. So um, my last one I did is of, <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm around age five and I've got a wagon full of gold and I'm taking it to the bank because I'm about to be really, really rich. And what happened was my friend and I had found fool's gold in like um, just a bunch of rocks in a big kind of rock pile. We lived in, um, in Gilbert, Arizona. So there were lots of weird areas to just get all sorts of random geological specimens. And we piled all of this gold, we really believed it was gold, into this wagon and literally walked it down to the bank and into the doors and asked for our money. <laughs> And they were just like, um, <laughs> no. So it was really disappointing. But however, the part of the memory that I'm accessing is the really good part. And what I have written down for that is empowered, excitement, potential, giddy, rich, happy, and professional. Because I think I felt like a professional, <laughs> like taking my, you know, all of my wealth into the bank. Anyway, you get the idea of, of how to use this directive and how to access um, those different, access and identify those different feelings um, and thoughts you were having at the time of a really good memory. Um, I encourage you to share your drawings and your memories and your your list of words that you come up with if you want to in the comment section or um, on my Facebook page which is John and McCall Expressive Therapy and um, next time that I do a video we're going to do these little teeny tiny absurdist disaster comics and I love disaster comics I like humor as much as possible um, as a way, as a coping mechanism. I think it's one of the best. And so we will be making our little teeny tiny uh, disaster comics next time. So I hope you will join me and I hope you take care. Bye.